are we doing this morning? Ooh, you'll wake up soon enough, it's fine. Uh, yeah, good morning, good morning. We're so happy to have you here and welcome to those that are joining us online this morning as well. Hope that everyone is enjoying the sunshine of the summer so far. And once again, we're so happy to have you with us. So I'm gonna invite us to stand and I'm going to pray an invitation with scripture over us this morning that whatever situations that we may be coming from either this morning or the week before, that we may need to open ourselves up again to God and what his spirit wants to do within us and among us this morning. So in Psalm 119 verses 48, it says to open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 15, it says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. And lastly, in Psalm 51 verse 15, it says to open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. So with that in mind, let's keep our eyes open to what the Lord wants to do among us. And let's open our mouths to sing his praises. So let's do that this morning, church. Open the eyes of my heart. 
just let us recognize and thank Jesus for guiding us along paths of righteousness and opening our, the eyes of our hearts for his name's sake. Let us thank him for being our solid rock and firm foundation upon which we can build our lives. And as a reminder of his ultimate sacrifice on the cross for our sins, I invite you to read Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 to 6 with me. Let's read. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And as we acknowledge that we have each turned away from the Lord in our own ways, let us ask the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, to be our vision and our wisdom. Let's sing together.
Jesus, in these moments, we want to pause and just acknowledge that it's really easy for our vision to dim or to get distracted, to be overwhelmed by the things we see in this world. And in these moments, we just acknowledge that, we confess that, we name those ways that our vision moves off of you and seeks life in other places. And we repent, we acknowledge that, we confess. Thank you that you are a God who does not treat us as our sins deserve, but as we read in Isaiah, you actually bear the consequences of our sin. And to all those who confess, you are faithful and you're just and you forgive us of our sins. It's your kindness and your compassion and your love, Lord, that wells up compassion and love and joy and longing for us to follow you down paths of righteousness. And so we pray collectively as we already have prayed in song, open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, that we can see you for who you are, what you've done for us, and where we can find real and true life. And collectively as a community, Lord, we want to acknowledge as we go through this summer series on rest, uh, we need rest in various parts of our lives and the places where we experience challenge and pain and loss and confusion and sorrow. And so do so many in your world as well. We pray that you would presence yourself with people who are out of their homes right now in, in Alberta, in California, so many people having to flee fires and losing most of everything. Would you comfort and presence yourself with them? May you let the church in those areas rise up and serve others in your name. We continue to, that you would continue to ask that you would bring rest and peace to this world where so many global conflicts continue to persist. Prince of peace, come and lead us down paths of right living that lead to human flourishing. Jesus, we need you. This city needs you. This world needs you. Thank you that you are present to us. As we open your word today again, would you challenge us by your Holy Spirit? Would you speak to us? Would you give us courage to follow you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, before you take a seat, say hello to a couple people, and uh, we're going to do a stage rearrangement, and then uh, we'll get on with our service. Well, it's great to be with you today. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is my first Sunday, actually, of a summer Sunday. Uh, we started summer Sundays, and I took off on a plane and went to Toronto, where we were uh, in um, meetings with our alliance, Christian Missionary Alliance. For those of you who don't know, this church is a part of a family of churches, about 440 churches across Canada, part of the Christian Missionary Alliance. And uh, we do a general assembly every couple years. We gather together to worship and to pray and to do business, which isn't my favorite part. Um, and also to hear just about where God is leading us as a denomination over the next number of years. And as I was at assembly this year, a few others were there with us. Um, I was really encouraged to hear where um, our president and their leadership is casting where we might go over the next decade. And uh, one of the reasons I was encouraged is because a lot of the conversations that we have been having here at our church are just very congruent. It's in alignment already with where the denomination wants to go. And I'm not going to dive into that all today. You're going to hear some more about that in about a month when we get to kick off Sunday and our ministry year. I'll tell you more about that. But it was an encouraging time together. 
And um, speaking of our denomination, we've got uh, two people leaving this week, two couples leaving this week uh, as part of our international workers going under the banner of Alliance overseas. And so a couple weeks ago, Kurt and Tisha Jones were up here and Pastor John prayed for them and sent them out. They're heading to Thailand this week. And then also uh, Ben and Rachel, who we just um, welcomed back, they're heading back already as well. And so I I want to invite them up here at this point. Uh, it was, seems like only a few weeks ago, it was a little longer than that, that we were welcoming them back from the Middle East. And then uh, uh, Ben preached uh, a couple weeks ago, and now they're heading back on Tuesday to uh, the Middle East for the next at least couple years. And so we want to bless them and as a church pray for them as they head out. Um, before I do that, I just uh, want to give you, Brent, uh, an opportunity to say a brief uh, last parting word to the crew, and you can use my mic, seeing how you didn't bring the one that I told you to bring. I tried, but I told you to call me a different name, and you failed at that, so. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Thank you to this family. Thank you. This is home, and I said it last week, and I'll say it again. This is home for us, uh, and to know that you're standing with us, that you're praying for us, supporting us, it means the world to us. So, thank you. Yes, I did make a mistake and used your real name. Okay, thanks for bringing that up. I also asked you a thing. I'm just, oh, no, he's not going to say anymore now. He's said more than enough. <laughs> if you don't know, Brent and I have, I have kind power. of grown up together, so we've got a bit of a relationship. Um, I asked you um, if you could read Arabic. I know you've been speaking Arabic, and you said it's been tough, but I just have a little test for you there. Do you, do you know how to read that? Do you know what that says? Can you read that out in a clear sort of way? Yeah, I can read it, but it, again, it doesn't just, translate. Just read it, no, please. No. Just read that in no, Arabic? this is a trap. <laughs> First word is Scott. Oh. <laughs> Kas. A couple of weeks ago, I asked you to prove your Arabic, and I just gave you a simple phrase, Scott is a good pastor. And you said that didn't translate. It doesn't translate super well. But my good friends at AI.com <laughs> tells me it does translate. Can't trust everything on the internet, Scott. So my Scott. last word to you is liar! <laughs> yeah. And on that note, I'm going to try to transition to prayer. Yeah. You want to do that? Uh, let's pray together. This is their church community sending these guys out. And so let's together, church, pray for them. Lord, we do bless this family. We thank you for the work that you've been doing in their lives. Uh, as we all sit here collectively with our own unique callings and roles to play in your kingdom, uh, we just acknowledge that this is a unique calling to leave and go to another spot uh, with some unique uh, challenges and some unique joys. And so we pray, Jesus, that as they leave and resettle back in their growing home, we do pray that you would allow them to settle quickly, to re-engage smoothly. We pray that you would continue to give them faith to follow you, courage to do ministry in your name, Pray that you would continue to open doors like you have in the last couple years, uh, wide open doors for them to do good work uh, that you've prepared for them in advance. We pray that through their life, uh, we pray that through their schooling and the children's schooling, we pray that through their uh, being embedded in a neighborhood, you pr we pray that your light would shine brightly through them and that you would bless many people uh, through their ministry, their love, their service, ultimately to you through serving these folks. God, would you go before them? Would you strengthen them in wearying times? And would you lead them uh, to unique partnerships and unique roads that will continue to advance your kingdom in their town and in their city and through their ministry? We pray your blessing on their awesome kiddos too. 
continue to keep them healthy and engaged in beautiful ways in their school and in their neighborhood. May they find joy in being a family together, in the friends they're making, and uh, in the role that you've called them collectively as a family together. We send them out in your name and with our prayers and blessing. Amen. Amen. They're going to be around here after the service. If you want to say hello and goodbye, uh, please take a moment to do that. Uh, A couple quick announcements that are a bit more local in nature that I just want to remind you about. First, this coming Monday, we have a a movie night here. Uh, Two episodes of The Chosen are going to be shown, an intermission in between for us to hang out. If you haven't watched any of The Chosen yet, it's a great... um, series to to watch gives you a different perspective on some familiar stories in the gospels and doing it in community is a great way as well and so that's this coming monday night july 29th and then a little later on after that uh, august 8th it's a thursday night we're doing a beach worship night we've done that a couple times through the summer now um down at crescent beach you just have to come uh show up if you want at 5 30 with a picnic dinner and you can hang out with some other people in community uh, in, at the church, and then at 6.30, the worship uh, time will start, and there's going to be a tent like you see out in the foyer right now. There's going to be a tent at the north end of Blackie Pit, um, and that the parking lot, Blackie's Spit, Pit, Spit, that place, Crescent area. You'll find it. August 17th, uh, we partner with the City Dream Center on a few different initiatives. This is a really big one that they do uh, in an attempt to bless and help um, underprivileged or or, uh, financially challenged uh, families as their kids go back to school. There's lots of ways that they fill up backpacks and send kids back to school in beautiful ways. Um, If you want to help with that, we've had a number of people help each summer. You just need to go to City Dream Dream Center, their website, and there's four or five or six different ways that you could help with this event. And we'd encourage you to um, take a look at that website and participate as you're able as we seek to bless our city and the families in our city. And uh, can thank you for continuing to partner with us in giving. And through the summer months, it's always a little bit touch and go. And we end with a big push, and then the summer kind of comes. And usually we start uh, a little bit behind. The fiscal year starts in July 1, and it's a challenging time to start um, a new fiscal year. But thank you to those of you who are participating with us in this and allowing us to do ministry in Jesus' name. And we would welcome those of you who call this place your home to join us in that responsibility. Parents, just a reminder, um, we're inviting you to drop off your kids before the service begins, just so we have enough room uh, for us to gather together in one service throughout the summer. And so you can do that as you make your way into the building. And um, at this time, if you're J57, we're going to invite you to head out and you're going to go to your special class now as we continue. I think that's all that I needed to say, and so I'll invite Anne and a special friend to come up and uh, do our reading for today. Hi, everyone. This is Anton. Hi, Anton. And we're, yeah. He's going to read a psalm today, and I'm going to read it in a different version. Some of us might not know that there's different versions of the Bible, but it is so that every ear can hear and understand in a way that is relative to them. So here we go. Anton, here we go. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. 
my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Anton, you can go with mommy and daddy over there, and you can take this to my friend. So good. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. It's beautiful. It's poetic. Welcome to Peace Portal Church. Uh, My name is Anne. If you're here in person and you're here for the first time, please make yourself known. Please come and talk to one of us or the welcome desk. We want to know you. We want you to connect with this church family. And if you're online, you can do the same on our website. It's really good to be with you. And for those that don't know me, I am the pastor of women's and young families here at Peace Portal. And we are in Psalm 23 all summer long. We're unpacking one verse at a time. And I get half a verse. (laughs) So if you've gotten to know me just a little bit, half a verse is amazing. So I can talk all day about this stuff. Um, As I was studying, this word, some of you have asked me, how's it going, Anne? I've been praying for me through this preparation time. Thank you for that. That's super special. Um, And I have confessed to every single one of you how this word has like worked on my heart like in tears as I've been preparing and just really wrestled with this scripture. And I think Scott knew exactly what he was doing when he was asking me to speak about rest. Full confession, I don't rest well at all. I don't know how to do that well. And maybe some of you have grown up in families like mine um, who come from um, immigrant families or this could be a cultural thing, but I think it's very common in North America too, uh, where my mom, I would sit down, my Middle Eastern mama is lovely, some of you have gotten to know her too, and I just sit down with like a cup of coffee, just, just kind of inhaling, ever since I was like a teenager, even a child, but I was trying to go back into some history and memory, and I went, every time I'd sit down to kind of take a break, she'd be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm sitting, I'm sitting down. Why? There's something to do. You go clean, you go do this, you go read a book, you go, there's always something to do. You can never just sit down. And, or maybe, maybe you come from another extreme where my Latino side of the family, that's my husband's side, um, have like, if you know, a Mark Anthony song. Now, everybody's going to go and download Mark Anthony on Spotify. My goodness. But he has this song called Vivir Mi Vida, which is Live My Life. And it's all, it's very catchy. And it's all about like, Vivir, you're like, that means live my life, like to the fullest. And I could do a little salsa dance here for you, but I won't. And it's like, why are you going to cry? Why are you going to suffer? What's the point of that? Let's just dance and have fun. And that's like the other extreme of not resting, just covering it all in this fun and go, but not really sitting in this um, this psalm, what it says. Spurgeon calls this the pearl of all the psalms. There have been prayers made of this. Many of you have memorized this. Similar to, to Anton, he was just reading it. It's like so poetic. Even Christian and popular music has taken this. Anybody grew up in the 90s? Anybody watch Gangster's Paradise? This is coming as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. You know, like, come on. That was, this was the inspiration of me being a high school teacher was this movie. Uh, so Maybe it's so popular because it's relatable. 
It's referred to in the midst of suffering, and it's a reminder that we're not alone. So I'm not preaching on the whole, the whole psalm. I got verse 3b. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Here's the thing. This psalm is so personal. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Or he guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. These words are like from the heart of an author to God, and yet somehow they capture the heart of us who believe in Yahweh today too. And then we have this metaphor of sheep that's in here so that we can get a visual very, very culturally relevant to that time too. We're not so much familiar with sheep today. We live in concrete jungles. Uh, But when we think of sheep, we think of like, Mary had a little lamb, or my version is like Arabic. Oh my gosh, it's my mom singing, Mary had a little lamb with an Arabic accent in English. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb. Anyway, but also, Mary had a little, some of you guys don't sing this song anymore. It's a classic. This baby shark business took over. Like, come on. That's a goody oldie one. When I, in 2014, when I was teaching, I took a group of kids, uh, high school students, to Ecuador. And we had the beautiful privilege of working with indigenous community of Chimborazo. And we visited a local group of female entrepreneurs called Sumac Ahuana. And they provide an alternate source of income for women and families. It empowers them to have control over their finances. They raise sheep. They shear sheep. They clean wool. They dye it. They create products and then they sell it. And it's very entertaining to watch the shepherds. Maybe you're entertained with a younger version of me uh, (laughs) there. But they watch the shepherds call their sheep. And every one of the shepherdesses had a different sound. And they would try to, they would call their sheep. And it would be like, and all the sheep would follow. Or somebody else would have like, and then the sheep would follow. But there is no way we all try to imitate. There is no way those sheep were coming to an imitation. They were going to their shepherdess. Even if the sounded similar, it was different. And it was amazing to see the sheep follow their shepherd's voice. And I remember a team member, like his 15-year-old kid, going and asking the shepherdess. And and he says, what puts the sheep in danger? And so then I translate for him. And and, and she looks at me and she goes, oh, well, there's predators. And there's flies and bugs and parasites and there's famine, and ultimately, if they stray away, we're going to have to go and get them, and then we have to leave the other And she was like preaching a message, and they were not believers. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is incredible. And then she's like, well, sheep are led astray so easily. They, they're really defenseless. They can't bite. They can't scratch. They can't fight, really. They rely on their shepherd, who keeps them on the right paths and tends to their needs. Here's the verse. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm trained as an English teacher, so I I sit and I look at the verbs and I go, whoa, that's powerful, especially in poetry, because you have to choose your words. There's only a few words, but they have to have a punch and carry a punch, and that word restore means bring me back to life. He brings us back to life and then leads and guides on the right path, because there is a wrong path. There is a wrong path. I know to say the truth sometimes, oh no, every single path leads to this. No, there is a wrong path and there is a right path and he leads us on the right path. Because see, the wrong path, there's a, there's a stench on the wrong path of sin. There's a parasite that kills the soul. There is a predator that's after each and every one of us. But we don't think of that often in our life. We don't live our life like that. Maybe. 
And so here was the job that we had. The sheep got cared for. They were gently guided on the right path, but they got cleaned up. In the picture that was there, they were like full of muck. It was heavy. Their wool was heavy. And we had to sit, and it was oily. I remember just touching and going, oh, this is disgusting. I can't believe it. This is their job. And they were just like shaving this thing down. They're like, you want to try? I'm like, oh. Okay. And, and they're like, they're giving me scissors to like take off this muck of sheep wool and it's all tangled. And I'm trying to cut through this. It's thick with dirt. And some of us have this nasty grime on us in our life. And we need to just come and say, like that verse that was read earlier in Isaiah 53, we need a shepherd that would come and lay down his life for us. Because all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We've turned, every single one of us, to our own ways. But the Lord put all of that grime, all of that dirt on Jesus. We need a shepherd. We need a guide. And here's the thing. Some of us, we we just need to, I needed to confess this as I was reading through. Something is guiding me. Something, if it's not the good shepherd, if it's not God, if it's not Jesus guiding our life, what is? And maybe there's certain areas. For me, it's ambition. It's, I am constantly striving. Remember, I wasn't allowed to sit down and have a drink. (laughs) Poor poor mom, she's just doing what she's taught too. But it was, uh, something was guiding me. It was that ambition that was guiding me, this striving constantly. Is that your shepherd? Is a shepherd... Maybe it's the voices of this culture that is so full of discontent and negativity. Everybody wants to cancel everything else. Or what is guiding us truly? Maybe there's other things that are guiding you that keep you disconnected from God. Maybe it's a desire for love. And that guide keeps distracting you from the true love of God. The true love of a savior, of a shepherd that would lay down his life for you. Or maybe it's the guide of worry. Whatever it is, let's do that personal inventory and examine ourselves and who is guiding our life or what is guiding our life. And then maybe we can experience the rest, resting in the Lord and not in our own strength and our own ability. Maybe then we could be aware of alternative shepherds, alternative voices that are constantly trying to distract us from the right path. And maybe then we could surrender control of areas of our lives and find rest in the true guide for the honor of his name. See, rest, I realized, doesn't equal a vacation or a break. That's not what this psalm is about. That's a North American lens. I need to rest. I need a vacation. I need a break. I need to unplug. That's not what he's talking about. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of life saying, I need the shepherd and I will trust him to guide me and to lead me and to restore me and to provide for me. And I'll receive a deep sense of peace enough that would allow me to lie down in green pastures. Oof. Even in the suffering, because that's not what it says either. It doesn't mean that we're void of suffering or pain. Even in the joy. I can say the Lord is my shepherd. This is who I need and this is what I want. Because we're not meant to do this life solo. So I've invited a few friends. I thought, why don't we talk about this? Friends, panelists, come on up. People that are not experts, they would say that themselves. I'm not an expert, as I've confessed. People who are willing to be vulnerable. People that say, I know this shepherd and I want to live my life with him. Because no one's a champion of resting, right guys? But these people I know are like spirit-filled people who have lived ups and downs of life, trusting in the Lord Jesus. So welcome, Deb and Pascal and Ryan. Would you introduce yourself ever so briefly? And then we're going to jump. <laughs> real, real briefly. Yeah. My name's Ryan Fisher. I'm married to Maddie Fisher. Um, I was the pastoral intern last summer. That's probably why you recognize my face and my accent. I was born in Australia. I've been here for six years. And I'm a permanent resident trying to become a citizen. Yay! I've been coming to Peace Portal for four and a half years, too. Pascal. 
Hi everyone, I'm Pascal. Um, my wife is over there, Michelle. We have two kids flying around Great J57 and, and Children's Church. Uh, I've been coming here for about two and a half years and uh, I am a businessman and run a tech company. My name's Deb Drulo and my husband Wes and I have been coming here since 1998, so a long time. Um, and we love this church. We had a business in construction. We are now retired, so to speak, and I still do books for lots of charities. Amazing. So good. Thank you, panelists. <laughs> okay. Here we go. We're going to be vulnerable. These guys are going to have what we call a vulnerability hangover after this, but I love you all so much for saying yes. Um, so question for you, Pascal, we're going to start with you. What has kept you from remaining focused on Jesus through your life? Like times where you've been led astray or how did other voices lead you, distract you from the right path? Okay, she said we should be vulnerable. Here we go, let's go. I'll try. Um, I think for me it's been really around work. Uh -huh. um, I work within the technology space and things are moving really fast. Um, you have to build products, get them to the market really fast, solve a significant human problem. And sometimes it's really challenging to create a balance between um, moving very fast in your company and to be honest, like finding time to pray. Um, yeah, I will say for me it's work. Mm -hmm. And um, in our space, it feels like the person who works the hardest gets the most results. So there is some sort of a competition to outwork each other. So I'll say work is the distraction for me. Uh, Ryan, what about you? What distracts you from that right path? Or in your life? Because sometimes there's seasons and there's yeah. areas, right, of our lives. Yeah, I often find myself, I, I grew up in a Christian family. I've been going to church for, actually, I think my parents left a church thing so that my mum could have me. So I've, I've just known church as everything in my life, and I often find religion to be the biggest thing that keeps me from following Jesus. That's a constant in and out season of life for me of, I want to perform. I want to be good enough. I want to be lovable. God's got to love me. So I need to do, if I can tick off all these things, if I can get myself through the darkest valley, right. then I'll be worthy of his rod and staff protecting me, you know? And so I often find myself caught in performing. And even that, that, that can be removed from God. I find myself distracted by that with people in my life. I want to be seen as good enough. I want mm -hmm. people that I look up to to find reasons to make for me to be respectable to them rather than just I am enough and I often find that has pulled me away time and time and time again and it keeps you from resting because everything you do is about how can I be how can I be good enough so I need to keep working because if if I sit down no. I'm I'm going to fail and people will find out that I'm a fraud and I'm a fake Deb, you're up. Well, I must be, I must have the same mom as you. <laughs> I must, <laughs> very kind similar. Of the same cloth. <laughs> um, yeah, I grew up that way yeah. too. Yeah. You don't rest. And um, I, so I really struggle with resting. And in the terms of, like you said, sitting still, I don't know how to do that. And um, I think for me, there's a lot of distractions. Um, you know, there's technology, there's, there's even really good things like serving people. And, um, you know, what you were saying, Ryan, like the good things in our life where we might be even in ministry or doing, um, I don't know, meeting the needs of your family. Um, those are all good things. But um, I think that, that because of that, you end up, if you don't learn that real true rest in in your heavenly father that you, you suffer like physically, mentally, you know, I can tell it in my body and, okay. and how I react and spiritually, of course, but yeah, it can affect you in so many ways, I believe. Well, I was chatting with you guys before we started and I said, this for me is more about, do I trust Jesus to be my shepherd? Do I trust him enough 
to say, actually, he's saying, walk in this path, and, I, and he's going to lead me in that path. Or I'm going to be like, no, I want to go down this path. And how many times have I done that? It's, a, it's just this, this wrestle of trust for me. And so what are some things that keep you, have kept you away because you're discontented or you, have a, you don't lie down in the green pastures, you kind of resist the being guided on the right, right path? You start us off. I'm guessing me first. Okay. Um, I often find that I can get so close to that. It's like he has guided me there. And the thing that, like, you walk past it and you see the, the trickling creek and you're like, wow, I would love to be laying down there. But you realize it's actually the biggest part of me is the humility to understand that he has the best for me. Mm. Like, that's something I've been working on in the past couple of months is realizing, like, the amount of humility it takes for me to lay down my opinion and my thoughts and what I want, like, I think a lot about myself. I think highly of myself. I like to be in control and I like to be powerful and I like to feel like, like, it goes along with what I said earlier, but it's this, this internal thing of realizing the thing that keeps me from laying down, the thing that keeps me from being content is because I think I know better. And the thing that I have found in the past couple of months is the times when I do find rest and the times that I do find myself breathing out mm -hmm. is the times that I have tasted a tiny bit of true humility and surrendering to him. Just that little bit more that allows me to, okay, I'll sit down in the green pastures. I think you know better. It doesn't last very long because I'm usually straight back to what can I do better? How can I perform more? But there's a couple of seconds there where I'm like, oh, I would like to, I'd like to be here often. Mm. I'd like to stay here. Deb, what about you? Oh. Well, the, one of my life verses is Philippians 4.11, which is I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. But um, it's, a, it's a great verse, but I, you know, and I find that discontentment is so easy in the hard times, right? It's easy to be content if everything's okay, but it's really hard to be content when you have a divorce in your family or when your business is going sideways or, or whatever, the big things in life, right? Even the little things. And so um, I think that I, I guess the, the thing that I've turned to is just to go back to my faith and back to that verse and say, yes, I, I can be content and I can trust, you know, you use the word trust. And I, I was going to say that to the next question, but I'll say it here. Like, I think rest is trust. Mm -hmm. If I don't have trust, I can't rest. I can't sleep. I can't face the day. Thank you. Yeah, I think for me, it's the, the real distraction is if you have been right so many times, like you've tried things by yourself and they worked out very well, it's really hard to relinquish control mm -hmm. that way. So for me, the, the real reset sometimes is when things don't, don't go as planned. And then you know that you should trust in the Lord with all your heart. And you should not lean on your own understanding. I, I had an experience um, a few years ago that um, created a very strong reset for my entire life. Right? I, I lost my dad and then went for the funeral. I was involved in a car crash after the funeral that almost killed me and my brothers. And then when I came back to Canada, I was almost in another car crash again. Then I got fired from a job. Like, think about that. Like, you can actually lose your mind. So when all of that happened, that was the first time I felt that I couldn't really control my life. And the scripture around trusting God with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding became so real. So Ever since that happened, I've learned that even when I'm going so fast, trying to conquer the world, build great products, I still have to go back and know that God is my shepherd. Otherwise, I can't rest. I think, I know we're not supposed to preach on the darkest valley part, but I think <laughs> that part's in there because it's in the darkest valley sometimes where you're just like, most of the time, yeah. you're like that awakening of, whoa, I need this shepherd. I can't do this life alone. Um, what does rest now look like for you, though, in Jesus? What does it look like to follow the shepherd? 
it was hard when I got your message to talk about rest. I think for me, rest is really knowing that God has my back no matter what happens. So for me, it's that comfort in knowing that come what may, I will be fine. That's how I define rest. But physically, it's hard to say. Michelle can tell you. It's, if Michelle sees me sitting down, her first question to me is, are you okay? <laughs> so, because it never happens. Even when I'm sleeping, the brain is working. I have to be awake somehow. Well, maybe that's why, we haven't talked about this, but maybe that's why that's in there too, like the lie down, the green pastures, like the, can you actually, because that's the first thing that's stolen from our lives when we're not resting, like, well, I mean, at peace in our minds is our sleep. Yeah. And so a lot of the questions I've been asking people recently is like, are you having a good sleep? And, uh, see? <laughs> confession right here. It's public confession. If you're not having a good sleep, then how can we actually, maybe we have to read this psalm before we go to bed or something. Yeah. Like, so that it's like this reminder of let that be what we're mind is day and night meditating on his word. So that gets in us rather than all the other things that are swirling in our minds. I don't, I just want to give some practicality to this because it sounds great and I, we can sing it and dance it and say the poetry of it but it's powerful. His word is alive, and it's like a double-edged sword that comes into our life. To, I heard one pastor say, it goes in and it pierces and it takes out all the yucky things that are in your heart, but it's like whatever that is, it's, it's alive and it works on us. It works on our, in our minds the way that we think. It renews our minds. It renews the way that we, that we live. Deb, what about you? What, are, what does it look like now for you to rest? Well, I, I feel like you can rest even if you're not sitting still. Yeah. I think you can okay. rest weeding your garden and, you know, with your headphones on and just have the music cranked and singing at the top of my lungs because nobody can hear me. Um, um, I think it looks like, um, I don't know, different. I, th I think it looks like just when I stop and I chat with somebody and I just listen Maybe that's part of my rest, is just listening to someone and not jumping in and talking, you know, and just hearing them, which is very hard for me. And um, I, was think, I, I was thinking today, we sang, you know, when darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. Um, like, that's, that's the kind of thing that I find is if I just focus through, and worship songs do that for me in a big way. Um, the, new, the kids' song that they sang at camp, I praise when I'm breathing, I praise when I'm down, I praise when I'm up, um, you know, that new song, and they were all dancing here. Yeah. Like that, that, to me, just in my heart, just builds me up and gives me rest, just in a, a total different way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump in here, too. That my rest has been taking walks, going and doing something fun with friends. It looks different. It's not sitting still, but it does look different. What about yeah. you? Rest has uh, always felt complicated to me as an extrovert because it's really easy to always be busy. Yes. Like, I have a bad day at work. What do I want to do? I want to spend time with people because it's been a tough day and that's how I'm going to feel more energy. And it has been one of the things that has held me in the midst of seasons when feeling drawn away from Jesus, people have been the thing that have helped me. Like, their faith has encouraged me. But often that can carry on into every area of my life when I suddenly realize I never spend time alone. I never sit with my thoughts. I never bring things to Jesus. I bring them to my friends. I bring them to my wife. I bring them to family. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, God isn't God anymore, my friends are. Like, they're the ones that are being my comfort. They're being, being my strength. And so I have found that, amazingly, people are the biggest encouragement. Being with people gives me rest. But it's more than that. Mm. Being with people encourages and uplifts me, but they're not God. And I find that I need to balance that, that being with people encourages me, but sitting alone with my thoughts allows my mind to rest sitting alone and even you said trust right 
I think one of the biggest challenges for me is I say I believe in Jesus, but then often I live a life that is, I believe that you are merciful and I believe that you are all of those wonderful things. But then I like don't really live like that. I kind of, it's built on me and this pent up strength and I've come to realize that I need to start surrendering. And if I say I believe it, then what does that mean? And I ask myself that question almost every morning. And it allows me to find more rest in him because if that is the belief, if I believe that the word of God is true and what it says in there about me is true, I can take a breath. I can, I can step back and I can realize that I don't have to strive and stress. And does it take it all away immediately? No, but I have been finding that if I can balance my time with people, do people lift me up? that I try to find time to be with him, whether it's reading the Bible or going for a walk, sometimes that's the perfect place to, I'm just gonna walk because I don't know what my mind is doing right now. Let's just go until it's slowly, oh, okay, I'm finding myself praying because I've allowed myself to calm down a bit. Um, I could go on about a bunch of different things I've tried, but I love reading books, I love journaling, I love, yeah, all that, all those different bits and pieces to try to bring together being and enjoying time, but also removing myself That's and good. allowing him to be, him to be God. That's good. That's so good. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask the band to come back up and res- we're going to respond um, in song. But because I'm a teacher, this is your homework, is to take these three questions and reflect on them in your loneliness this week. And reflect on them as you reread Psalm 23 again, uh, over and over and over again. Maybe some of you need to read it 10 times over for that word to start to like sink into the mind and into the heart. Or maybe it's just the one time, the minute I read, <laughs> lie down in green pot, like, oh, Lord, okay, this is, this is, you're talking to me right now. Uh, whatever that looks like for you, take these questions and reflect in your own personal inventory as we enter into song again. In light of our message, I'm going to invite us to stand. What are the ways that we may need rest? What are the ways that we need to surrender and let more of God in? As we ponder that, let's respond. Okay. Yeah. 
shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Let's go out in peace and grace as we live out this rest. 